There are several methods to propel a model rocket upwards. Solid fuel rockets are very impressive, but the rocket motors are rather expensive. Estes has also sold a couple of model hydrogen rockets. There is no fuel carried in the rocket, but hydrogen is created by sending electrical current into the water, creating hydrogen. Hydrogen is ignited, creating a small explosion that sends the plastic rocket skyward. A water or pop bottle rocket uses a liquid and a gas in combination for propulsion. Air is pumped into a plastic pop bottle that is normally up to half full of water. The water increases the mass that is ejected out the neck of the bottle. Without the water, the rocket will not go very high. With an unrestricted pop bottle neck, all the water is ejected within the first few feet of the launch. At this point, the rocket is moving at over 100 miles per hour. For the rest of the launch, the rocket is coasting. If the rocket is stable in flight, it may reach an altitude of a few hundred feet. Fins at the bottom help with stability. Launching an empty pop bottle only results in a flight path that does not get very high. And the bottle tends to tumble as it reaches the top of the launch. For pumping air, I started with a cheap bicycle pump, which really gets tiring after several launches and does not hold up. Mine is junk now. A friend gave me a portable 12 volt electric pump to use, which works well if connected to a car battery but smaller batteries run down in a hurry. Later in the season I invested in a good quality bicycle pump which has been working well. For a launcher I purchased both the more expensive Fitzco Aquaport launcher and the cheaper Backyard Blaster launcher in kit form. So far I have only used the more expensive launcher which works very well. The first rocket I constructed from a 2 liter bottle. I put a paper towel cardboard tube for an extension and a ping pong ball on the very top for the nose of the rocket. No recovery system at all. Of course the cardboard tube was bent as it hit the ground. As I put more tape on the tube to try to fix it, the rocket actually flew higher because it was balanced better. Later I would modify the ping pong ball so it just rested on the tube attached to a string and a streamer. The idea being that as the ball came loose it would pull the streamer out and the rocket would come down in a more horizontal position slowing the descent of the rocket. It worked some of the time. For my next rocket I decided to design parachute recovery into the rocket and the soft nose to absorb the shock of hitting the ground when the parachute didn't come out. I cut a Nerf football in half for a soft nose. Good thing is it took a little experimenting to get the parachute to come out all the time. The nose cone must sit just right on the bottle so it stays on during the launch but comes off at the top of the launch, the apogee. I glued string around the bottle where the bottom of the nose rests to make a ledge. Otherwise the nose is forced down tighter on the bottle and the nose does not come off. The parachute was made from waste basket liner, just guessing at the size which worked out to be good. For the pop bottle I used a 1 liter bottle which took less water and less time pumping up than a 2 liter bottle. For the fins I used blue foam glued on with a low temperature glue gun. So far the fins have held up. I am a little concerned that too thin or flexible material for the fins would flutter. The third rocket was a smaller version based on a 20 ounce bottle. I used material from a lemonade carton for fins which appears to be stiff enough for the smaller rocket. I also created a soft nose out of foam rubber, half a ping pong ball and duct tape. This nose is cheaper than cutting up Nerf balls. 
Creating a smaller working rocket has some advantages. Not as much water is needed to fill it, less pumping is needed to get the pressure in, and it is quicker to drink the contents of the bottle. And when the parachute fails to open, not as much force to damage the rocket. Getting the nose to come off the smaller rocket consistently has been more difficult than the small rocket, probably because it's not as heavy. I have added weight to the tip of the nose, which seems to help, but I also have been experimenting with different types of ridges for the cup to rest on. Water rockets give you plenty of opportunities to try new ideas. Part of the fun is finding cheap material for free or almost free that you can use in the construction of your rocket. I recently also created a simple 20 ounce rocket with no parachute that has a nose designed to hopefully absorb the shock of hitting the ground. I cut a tennis ball in half for the tip of the nose and used foam pipe insulation for the rest of the nose. After several launches the glue joints were separating so I reinforced the duct tape which seems to be holding. I had an opportunity to observe a high school class that had an assignment to construct a two liter water rocket that would carry a payload of an egg which is supposed to be returned to the earth unbroken. Not as easy as it might sound. It's a challenge to get a larger parachute to open than a smaller one, but the larger parachute is needed for the extra weight. The connecting cord to keep the nose, parachute, and the body of the rocket together must be stronger and firmly attached. Pushing the egg in the nose cone is important also. I help with the launching of water rockets built by a group of summer camp kids. Most of the rockets were built with construction paper wrapped around the bottle and friends were attached to the paper. This combination could not withstand the high speed launches. In many cases, pieces of paper and cardboard came raining down from the sky. My experience with water rockets has not been all perfect launches either. More times than I can remember, I've had to repair or start over because of damage on hard landings. Getting the parachute to come out without the ejection charge used in solid fuel rockets is not easy. I hope this video has sparked some interest in water rockets.